hello. Good morning. I'm Jenny Williams with Get a Real Estate Life, and I'm here today with my partner in crime, Matt Laird at Bank of England Mortgage, Magic City Mortgage. Thanks for joining us, Matt. Yeah, happy to be here. Thanks for having me. One of the reasons that I wanted to make sure that we have this very important discussion about forbearances is because um, it's here. Um, you know, I stepped away from uh, uh, Get a Real Estate Life for about three years, got back in the trenches. And uh, uh, now I am uh, of selling. I sold 41 transactions that my first year back and then 43 last year and uh, crazy busy in the trenches. And I'm here back sharing with agents and forbearance is just keeps coming up over the past couple of weeks. Um, uh, you know, I've had um, several conversations um, with people about forbearances and I feel like we need to know the, the right questions. Right, Matt? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think, you know, forbearance is such kind of a, it's kind of a living, moving target too that, you know, it just keeps changing and changing that I think anyone who says that they're an, an expert in forbearance is just not telling the truth. Cause you know, I've talked to a lot of people who run mortgage companies and things, and they're just, you know, they're not even experts in forbearance and they have to deal with it on a day-to-day -day basis, but we'll give you the best information we have. I have done a, you know, a lot of research on it. So I do know a pretty good bit about it. Just, uh, you know, for, how it is right now. Well, one of the things that, um, you know, the government has been doing when, uh, you know, allowing or encouraging these mortgage companies to allow forbearances, um, they've been kicking it down, you know, kicking a can down, mm -hmm. kicking, it, kicking it, kicking it, kicking it. And uh, I think probably a lot of people don't really even understand or realize um, what the definition of forbearance is. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, um, I think a lot of people think that, hey, they just don't have to make a payment for a certain amount of time. So let's dig in on really like what the meaning of that is. OK, so forbearance is it was originally intended for people, you know, during the pandemic who were laid off or had a drastic reduction in income to be able to halt their mortgage payments. Um, it was never intended for people who had not received a drastic reduction in income to be able to take advantage of it. It wasn't intended that way, but you know how the government is. They didn't really put that into, into writing. So basically there was no checks and balances. Mm -hmm. Pretty much anyone could claim hardship and go into forbearance. But people at first thought like, Oh, this is great. I just don't have to make payments for three or four months. Um, but they didn't think about the fact that at the end, you know, at first people were wondering, Oh man, you're going to, you're going to have to make a, all the payments in a lump sum when you come out of forbearance and things like that. That's not the case. There's a few different ways you can come out of forbearance. Lump sum is one of them. Uh, you can do a pre uh, a repayment plan where you pay a little bit more than your mortgage over time to make up for the, um, the missed payments or um, my favorite and kind of the cleanest way to do it in my opinion, um, because we've seen a lot of people, you know, in a lot of trouble who take on like, you know, payment in half to try to make them up. Uh, it's just tack it on to the end of the mortgage. And that's the cleanest way to do it. That way you can continue to make your current payment and just go forward from there. Right. But I think a lot of people are under the misconception that that's what's going to automatically happen, that they've got all this free time. I mean, there are people that um, I've been talking to that haven't made a payment in 18 months. Um, and uh, when Matt is saying, um, for those of you who are watching a lump sum, that means like, hey, you've got to pay up 18 months of payments that you haven't made today mm -hmm. by this deadline or, you know, we can move forward with foreclosure. Um, that's a case by case basis. Um, mm -hmm. um, Matt, I'm going to come clean and uh, kind of tell you what my story is. We had uh, an Airbnb and mm -hmm. we um, have our personal household and, you know, with my husband um, being a home builder and uh, me selling houses, he was terrified when mm -hmm. everybody got sent home and he um, uh, filed for parents for both of our houses. And um, whenever it came time, uh, when it came out that first six months, I didn't keep deferring it. So that first six months, um, by the way, we never missed a payment on our Airbnb. We filed for it, but kept paying the whole time. Mm -hmm. Then we ended up selling it. Okay. So today is all about options and what we need to be teaching um, real estate agents to ask for um, on those options. Matt, we lost you. 
um, you'll need to, to log back in. Um, so uh, coming clean with it, whenever we did fall personally for ours, when that six months came up, you know, uh, I, I called to see if they would modify it and put it on the end. And they said that um, uh, sent me a huge stack of papers this big for the modification. And I had to prove that I didn't have the money. Well, I do have the money. So I just made all of those six months payments and a lump sum and brought it up. So your um, client, your seller client could come to you and say, um, I'm exiting forbearance because there are going to be so many people exiting forbearance over the next couple of months um, because of uh, that can that's been kicked you know, so far down the road. Well, a lot of people are not going to be able to pay 18 months of payments um, and they're going to be having to, to be forced with a couple options. So the things that you want to ask them are, you know, how many payments have they missed? Um, how many? There's Matt. He's back. <laughs> we lost you for a minute. I'm glad Sorry you're back. About that. It just like cut off. It went away like out of nowhere. So well, you know, anything can happen online. I mean, shoot, Facebook was uh, out all day yesterday. <laughs> no, no. So, so hey, what, what I miss? Okay, so I was talking about how what my personal story was, and um, you know, the modification having to to prove that I couldn't do that. Now, every mortgage company is going to be different. Um, it's they're going to look at things as a case by case basis. Do they right. want to take back over properties and put on foreclosure? They really don't, do they? Warmer, they do not. No, um, that's why. If they're even allowing the modifications, which you know, in in certain cases, if you can prove that you've had a sustained reduction in income. It's not likely to come back anytime soon. A lot of times they will work with you to try to modify your loan, um, lower your interest rate or extend the amortization period in order to uh, give you a reduction in your monthly payment. Well, so that's, that's um, you know, they try their best, I think in, in most cases to not take people's homes because Number one, it's just something they got to deal with. And number two, it just, you know, obviously the, the negative press is, is not good either. Well, it's not. But I can tell you this, that um, I had a listing that went into foreclosure last week. Mm -hmm. um, it sold on the courthouse steps. It was um, part of the forbearance. It was a really bad situation. And most of these are. And that's why I want to really get the word out to real estate agents. Um, if the seller had contacted me earlier, I could have done a short sale. Um, but uh, what we're seeing is that, um, you know, people are in despair whenever they put their house on forbearance and they're not maintaining it. So a lot of the condition can really go down during this time frame. I, I really I think it is a mindset. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so we're going to have to really take a look. This is where those home evaluations are going to get tricky. OK, if somebody calls you and they're in forbearance you really need to put your eyes on the condition of that property and not say, well, okay. roughly this is about what you can get for your house because um, a lot of these things are not being maintained. Um, the house that I had, if she contacted me sooner, I could have short sold it um, uh, because, and I had 12 offers on it. So it wasn't a lack of trying. It's just that the, when uh, people may have refinanced last year, we had a lot of refinances, right? Because yeah. interest rates were so low. So people were pulling out all of their equity. And then if they're not maintaining it and then not making a payment, this was a situation that the bank would not work with that seller. Um, but at the same time, just like you're saying, I had another one that missed 18 months and they ended up modifying her and she has very low income. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's going to be a case by case basis. Um, what do you think the, the very first question is that um, you need to, to, to make sure that a real estate agent asks their clients? Well, I would just say, you know, number one, if they're, if, if your client says they're in forbearance, like how long have you been in forbearance? This will give you an idea of how much you know they're going to owe over what they think their payoff is i would have them to you know order a payoff to give you a good idea of how much they're going to owe you know on the payoff at closing because you know i mean you're thinking if you had a twenty five hundred dollar three thousand dollar mortgage and it's been you know in forbearance for 18 months you know they're basically going to tack that on the end of the loan they may owe a lot more than they think they do so right. you know it may not make sense for them to sell it, or it may make sense for them to sell it to get out from under it and start new. But I would definitely, 
you know, do that, look at getting a payoff if they can come out of forbearance, um, possibly make go, going ahead and coming out of forbearance and making some payments, you know, over 90 days or so would help with their next purchase as well. Right. Um, with their qualification, because, you know, we're going to look at each case by case, but if someone's been in forbearance for 18 months and then they say, okay, well, I'm going to sell my house, not come out of forbearance and then go buy this other house with a mortgage. We're going to look at that. Like, how do we know you're not going to try to, you know, do us like this? You know what I mean? So right. if they come out of forbearance, show that they're making payments and things like that, that will look more favorably when they go to buy another house. Well, and Matt, um, I'd want to make sure to clear with everyone, just like you said, order that payoff. I beg mm -hmm. you to um, not let the seller, uh, an owner of a mortgage is not going to know um, what the true payoff is. If they, they're they going to rely on what their balance says on their monthly statement. Okay. Mm -hmm. And all of those payments and all of that interest put on the back end, that interest is still accruing. That number is going to be huge. What has been added to this mortgage, it will not reflect in the balance on that sheet. So I beg you do not let them be misled by relying mm -hmm. on their principal balance and ask that question. Let's go and get a proper payoff. So we know exactly what we're working with. Um, I've seen even way before this crisis, I've seen too many situations um, turn uh, uh, bad <laughs> upside mm -hmm. down for not only you, um, but for your client by relying on what it says on that principal balance. And a lot of times, you know, people forget that they modify loans. You know, we, we forget things. We're so busy. Um, you could have modified previously and forgotten right. about it. And um, so uh, if you do choose to modify your mortgage and that means put everything on the back end and that your lender agrees to it they're going to send you a lot of paperwork um so they're going to send the client a lot of paperwork you may need to help that client through this paperwork mm -hmm. um, uh, and i think we're going to end up seeing the, the majority of foreclosures in forbearance because people are not going to want to fill out that paperwork um, and the bank will have no choice but to take um, that over. So a couple of things that you need to know here, there were 9 million people who actually filed for forbearance. Um, if, most of those have actually pulled out of that. So mm -hmm. um, we're still, we've got one and a half million people across the country that are still in forbearance that will be exiting over the next couple of months. That's really a drop in the bucket considering, you know, I don't think it's going to have much of an effect on the market, but if I've already had four that I've come across um, over the past couple of weeks, then you're going to be seeing this constantly. And um, it is going to be, um, is something that you're going to probably hear a lot of up until March of next year. So um, you want to be well versed in it and, and know what to ask. Um, another thing that I feel is important for you and me, Matt, is that Birmingham, Alabama, where we are, um, is the fourth um, uh, uh, highest uh, rate of delinquencies on mortgages um, in mm -hmm. the U.S. Um, that could be affecting it, even if they're not in forbearance, that could affect the market for us. So um, we've got to be uh, out there asking these questions. How much do you owe right up front? Let's get a net sheet. Let's get a an official payoff. Um, the first option, if the condition is bad and all the equity has been refinanced, is short sale. OK, if we do a short sale, we have to contact you. You're going to have to have that client sign a permission that um, with their social security number on it, with their loan account on it. And um, uh, you're going to have to take it over from there. OK, they're going to give you permission to speak on their behalf. And then you're going to start by calling the mortgage company and requesting the short sale documents. And again, it is not fun. It is this big. OK, and uh, you're going to have to walk them through all of the steps. So then you would put it in our multiple listing service or your multiple listing service, wherever you are, um, as a third party um, uh, approval. OK, 
Okay. Because it's going to actually sell for less than what is owed on it. Because if market value is less than that, because they pulled all the equity out and the conditions gone down, um, then uh, that's where you get started on that option. Okay. Matt already hit mm -hmm. on the option of modifying. Okay. Calling, requesting if you can put that on the back. I've had one client that they would not modify for. And I had another client that they did modify for with no income. That's going to be on a case by case basis. Um, and, uh, but you will have to be in constant contact with your lender and fill out that paperwork. Um, which can be overwhelming, but you definitely want to do it because you don't want to lose your property. Right, Matt? <laughs> That's right. That's right. Yeah. And the more, the more contact that your client has with their lender or their mortgage servicer, the better. Um, because a lot of times the foreclosures come when the mortgage servicer can't get a hold of the client or they're kind of ducking them and they just really have no other alternative, but to foreclose on the house. So if your client is contacting and working with the lender, then, you know, a lot of the times the lender will work with the client and see what they can do to keep them in the house. Right. Okay. So, and then, then we can kind of move into that next option and see if it makes sense for you to sell it before exiting forbearance. Um, again, you're going to want to ask for the payoff. Make sure you know what that is before you tell them about what market value is and uh, a time frame. So um, you don't want to extend something out past um, the period and put them in jeopardy. Um, you know, uh, talking about, you know, when someone might take a house or foreclose on a house, um, Matt, you know, what are, what do you think the time frame is going to be for a house to actually go into foreclosure? That's completely case by case. You know, there's, um, I've seen them with six months or less of, of non-payment to start the process. And then I've seen them going for years without finally foreclosing. And it happened a lot in 08 when they were doing a lot of foreclosures. I mean, there were people that, you know, they would file foreclosure after not non-payment for a while, but they wouldn't actually go through with the foreclosure for two or three years sometimes. So right. um, that happened, you know, people would call and want to get, you know, they want to get mortgages and, you know, they thought, oh, well, they foreclosed this date, but they didn't actually finally take, you know, possession or deed it over to the bank until, you know, two, three, four years later. So that's actually when their foreclosure date started. We heard so many stories of people being able to stay in houses for, you know, a year, mm -hmm. sometimes two years um, after the process started. So more than likely, you're going to start getting notices if you're 60 days behind. So let's say that you couldn't catch up your lump sum. And you didn't call to modify. OK, and I'm talking about clients so that you will be well versed in this. Um, then you're going to start. They're going to start getting notices of foreclosure. So, again, you want to put them in touch with their mortgage company immediately. Order that official payoff. Ask them if something can be stalled. A lot of times you can actually extend um, if you have a case for them, they can extend it for another month. Another month in this market is like such a grace period because houses are selling so fast. So then you will have time to get with your client to get that house in a position for market ready and probably come out smelling like a rose on the other end. Um, what do you think um, with people being in forbearance and then selling their house? Are they going to easily be able to um, get another mortgage map? It's case by case. You know, if they have great credit, they can show why they went into forbearance and everything. Now, um, I did talk to our head of operations and he said that any anyone coming out of forbearance that is looking to buy another house, we can look at the scenario before they sell their house and see, like, hey, are we going to be able to do this or not? Um, you know, if we see that, you know, they actually were, you know, they took a huge hit in their income, they're wanting to sell it, start a new, but they've recently gotten a new job where they're going to be making as much or more and it's case by case they have good credit they've paid all their other bills you know things like that we're probably going to go ahead and do that mortgage for them um if it's someone who you know hasn't done all the right things and you know has not regained employment or has not you know um regained the type of income that they were making then sometimes you know that's going to be a, a much harder sell Okay. So for you as a real estate agent, that is genius advice. 
um, after you order that official payoff from the mortgage company. And some companies are automatic where you can download it online. Uh, some companies, they have to mail it to you and it could take seven to 10 days crazy. Um, but uh, then the next step would be advising uh, your client to call um, your local lender to try to get them approved for their next situation because expectations set you've sold the house and they can't buy, you know, you're going to put them in a really bad situation. So, um, and it's going to be heartbreak for you as well. And the rental market is just scarce mm -hmm. right now, super scarce. Um, so uh, I hope that you've kind of learned some of the steps here. Um, what will happen is uh, if the house does go into foreclosure because you, your client has been super slow to take care of some of these things because they're so overwhelming, it is going to be very common that nobody's made the first phone call to, to work anything out. Whenever they call you, you're going to probably be the very first phone call. Um, so you want to get them in touch with the mortgage company, order the payoff, have them get approved for their next situation. So you can set that expectation and um, then uh, take a look at the condition and see what the property would sell for. So those are really the steps. Am I missing anything? That's it. That sounds good. All right. And what's your phone number, Matt? So people can call and uh, see what they can do if they're in forbearance right now. It's uh, 205-807-1877. And, um, you know, we can help get anyone, you know, go ahead and get, get a go ahead on, on anyone before they sell their house. We lend in all 50 states. So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to give me a call. Awesome. I thank you for being here today and kind of walking real estate agents through um, this unknown. Um, we're going to see a lot of it. Um, over the next couple of months. And uh, we want to make sure that we're doing right by people because y'all people need us. Um, uh, whenever they make that phone call to you, let's make sure that we stay super respectful of the situation because I mean, 9 million people filed out of fear and uh, we want to make sure that we are um, uh, doing a good job by leading people down the correct path and handling their situations for them. So I'm Jenny Williams. If you need anything, reach out, um, you know, for uh, I've dedicated my life to helping real estate agents actually get a real estate life. So thanks, Matt. And Thank uh, y'all, thanks for watching. See y'all later.